folks, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create animations inside of Adobe Photoshop. So now you've seen the finished animation, just want to take you through how I've set the layers panel up ready for that. Now I've added three different colour fill layers so I can alternate the background throughout the animation when I need to. I've got a folder where I have uh, collected together some actual cookie letters you can see. We've also got the cookie itself and the way this is uh, broken down is it's formed of different layers as I keep hiding portions of that cookie it will then appear as though portions have been eaten away and we're left with just crumbs and an empty portion in there. So everything's kind of geared up ready for being animated. It's all very much planned ahead of time. Then at the top we've got a, a large cookie that's going to be shown in different colored backgrounds and then we're going to finish off with another collection of words called yummy. I'm going to go back up to the file menu and choose revert so I can go back to the state that my layers need to be ready for animating. And then going to head up to the window menu and we'll need to open up the timeline panel to do all of our animation work which appears at the bottom of the screen docked and we'll just need to drag that out there so we can see it a bit more clearly and then I'll recenter my artwork. From here we need to decide are we going to create a video timeline with uh, QuickTime video and audio and things like that or are we going to create something like an animated GIF with frame animation. And that's what we'll do, we'll choose create frame animation by clicking on the button then and then the panel becomes even smaller if that was possible and we're just set with one frame. So this shows us what the current layers and our artwork looks like right now. I'll then click on the add button to add a second frame, which will look exactly the same as the previous one until we change something. And, and this in essence is how we create our animation. We alter the way the document looks from one frame to another and we build up an animation. And with that in mind, I'll go to the layers panel. I'll turn on the layer group called letters. And I'll also turn on the layer group called cookies and expand them open so that I can see all the individual layers in there that I need to then turn on and off as I build all the subsequent frames. I'll go back to the timeline panel, add a third frame and then go back to my layers panel and turn off the first of the cookie layers to get a chunk taken out of it. And then I'll turn on one of my crumb layers. And with that done, I'll go back to the timeline panel and add a fourth frame. And that fourth frame will also need uh, one of the cookie layers removing and one of the crumb layers adding to keep building up our effect. And then I'll head back to the timeline panel and add a fifth frame and really just keep following this same process through. I'll remove another chunk of the cookie, add some more crumbs, then add a sixth frame, remove more of the cookie, add more crumbs, and then go back, add a seventh frame, I'll turn off the last of the cookie layers and then turn on the final crumb layer to finish off the effect. I'll then head back to the timeline panel and add an eighth frame and within that frame then I'm going to hide all of letters, all the cookies, all the crumbs. So we're just left with a plain light cream background in there. I'll then add a ninth frame but on this one I'm going to turn on the visibility for the really large cookie and that will be enough for that frame. I'll go back and then uh, just need to extend the timeline panel because uh, we're adding quite a few frames here and then I'll add a tenth frame and within that frame I will then start to alternate the background colours. Add another frame for frame 11 and then change that to a blue background. Add a twelfth frame in there and then turn off the cookie in that one and then I'll add one final frame that's frame 13 and turn on the layer group that contains the letters yummy and that will be the end of the animation. With all the animation frames now added I can go back to my timeline panel left click on the first frame to restart the animation and then press the play button but it plays through really quickly and that's because we have no delays every frame just appears for literally a frame and bearing in mind that in terms of animation there can be anything between sort of 25 and 30 frames per second quite normally then they appear very quickly and disappear very quickly so we need to alter that. I'll first of all left click on frame 1 to make it active for edits and then I'll click on the pop out menu for the frame delay time and I'll change that to 0.5 seconds making that frame stay on screen for 0.5 seconds before moving on to the next frame which of course in our case is frame 2 and so I'll click on frame 2 to make it active and I want the delay to be one second so that we can see the word cookies and see the cookie itself before chunks of it are taken away and those frames where portions are eaten away I start from frame 3 and run right through up to and including frame 6. Now I don't want those to stay on screen for that long, I want them to look as though they just disappear quite quickly. So I'm going to alter all of them at the same time by clicking on frame 3 and then shift and left clicking on frame 6 and then I'm going to change the delay for each of those to 0.2 seconds. And then we'll just give that a quick play to test it. 
and I think that works quite well. Again, just like frame two, we need frame seven to stay on screen just a little bit longer so we can see that all the bits of the cookie have been taken away. So I'll change the delay for that one to one second and then left click on frame eight, which is just going to be our plain cream background and set the delay for that to 0.2 seconds. And then I'm going to select frames nine, 10 and 11 and set the delay for each of those to 0.5 seconds. Select frame 12 and set that one to have a similar delay to uh, frame eight. So that's going to be set to 0.2 seconds before finally clicking on frame 13. That's the last frame. Leave it on screen for two seconds so we can see it nice and clearly for the end frame of the animation before that will then loop back to beginning and play again. And if I just click back on frame one to reset the animation, I'll press play and let's just see how the timing's working out now with all those frames edited. And I think they're looking much better. So I'll just press stop. But I think I will go back to frame 12 and just increase the delay on that one to 0.5 seconds instead of 0.2. And then reset the animation and just have a quick playthrough, see how that's working out. And yeah, I think that, that delay from 0.2 to 0.5 seconds for frame 12 is a little bit better. I'll press stop and that's pretty much the animation done. We now need to export that. So I'll go to file, export, and then choose save for web legacy. When the dialog box appears, do make sure that of course this needs to be an animated GIF. So the file format does need to be GIF from the upper right hand side menu. And in the preview window, the lower left hand side, it tells us this is a, a 1.25 megabyte file, which is quite big. So I can change the file size of this by reducing the height to 720, half in the size of the file as well. And then notice that lower down, we've got an option for looping. Uh, this is set to forever by default. And you'll find that with some social media sites that you do have to post animated GIFs that loop. It won't let you post an animated GIF that only plays once. So we'll leave that set to forever. You can play the animation through and preview that if you wish to. We've done that already and checked it. And then from the lower left hand side of the dialog box, there is a preview button which will show your artwork previewed in your default web browser. In my case, it's uh, Chrome. Uh, it is a handy feature, nice to see that in a browser and see how it will actually look. But of course, this is just a preview, so I need to head back to Photoshop and finish saving the file. Uh, all we need to do in this case then is head down to the save button, it takes us to our file browser and I'll just leave the file name in here set to animation and it will remember all the settings from this dialog box and click on save and it saves it as an animated GIF. And that folks is how you create animations inside of Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for watching folks. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to create great looking artwork and save oodles of time, then subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, farewell.